Hi, everybody. It is Kathy, and I love to be selling. Come on in, sellers. Um, just comment below, say hi, how you're doing. Let me know what the weather's like, so that way I know um, how you're all doing, okay? And I just have to check one thing. I had a little bit of a snag, and I just want to make sure we are doing everything right. So hang on just a second while I'm just checking in. Let me know how you are. How are everybody? Yay, yay, yay. So hang on just a second. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, good. Yay. Okay. Hi, how are you? Hey, Deborah, how are you? Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Um, so while everybody's coming in and settling in, lovely new shirt. Brian Burke was in town who does a lot of wonderful work with uh, reaching out to eBay sellers, eBay community. I'll show this off. And Brian very kindly gave me this shirt. So I am modeling uh, the eBay blue shirt. So come on in, you guys. Hi, Diana. How are you? Um, so what I want to talk about tonight, there still seems to be a lot of confusion about free shipping, free returns, the spring seller update, what to do, what not to do, what the rules are. So I want to go over it very, very simply, very, very clearly. And what I really want to emphasize looking at it, um, because I, a lot of different things seem to be going on, um, is, and that's this is what I want to start out with, is to think about what kind of business do you want to have on eBay? I think sometimes what happens when these updates come out, any policy changes, sort of any changes, anything going on, um, sales are good, sales are not so good. Sometimes I lose sight of why am I selling on eBay? And that's gonna be very personal and that's gonna be very different for everybody. Um, when I started years ago and I'm selling now over 10 years, you're gonna get a little bit of Friday night here in New York City going on, um, was, I needed something really flexible. Um, I had a sick mom and I was running back and forth a lot to the hospital and I needed something that I could easily pick up and put down. And it was very hard to get any kind of uh, work with that kind of flexibility here in New York City. Um, this is way before cell phones, <laughs> way before all, you know, so much of the flexibility of the internet. And eBay was a godsend for me. I was deeply, deeply grateful. You know, I could get my packages in the mail and I could run and take care of my mom and run to the hospital and do doctor's appointments with her. So for me, absolutely, I was looking for flexibility. You know, you might be a stay-at-home mom. This might be side income for you. This might be full-time income for you. You might be right on the verge of full-time income. You might be in the process of scaling your business back. I mean, there's a lot of different situations going on for people. Um, so take a look at that. What do you want you right now for your eBay business? I'm blessed. I have a very profitable business. I'm looking to increase my business. So I want to increase my sales, but I want to keep my hours down. So there's certain choices I'm making um, to do that. I'm looking at some automation. I'm looking at some other things. So when you look at the spring seller update, the first thing to keep in mind is what kind of business do I want to have? Um, how, how do I want the general feeling of my eBay selling to be? And then once you have that in mind, so again, you look at if it's part-time for you, if it's full-time for you, you can be a very busy multi-channel seller, which is you're selling several different places. Then you come to look at eBay, okay? Now, eBay is one of many fantastic um, places to sell. I absolutely love eBay. Um, and what is happening in e-commerce, if you're not aware of this, um, and if you're not, look around, you know, go on other websites, look at, look at what policies are, look at what the shopping experience is like. It's good as a seller to do that, that returns are an absolute necessity for selling online. And the reason for that, yes, straight up, I'm not, you know, we've all run into them. You know, there are some very challenging buyers. So you're going to have people, um, they call it renting, you know, they, they get the, the clothing item, they use it for a week or two, and then they return it. Yeah, that is going to happen. Absolutely. Thankfully, it is a small minority. 
you're, you're going to have that too. You're going to have people buy something new with tags and they're going to wear it or use it with the tags on and then return it to you with the tags on. Um, I mean, all of this kind of thing is going to go on. And it's not just you. It's all of e-commerce. It's all of online. And it's also in brick and mortar. I have a corporate client here in New York City and I am in brick and mortar and brick and mortar means a regular store regularly. They deal with it too. So this is nothing new, but to have a business, to attract customers, to take care of customers, we need to have a return policy. So it's a thing of finding a return policy that is going to work for you and your business and what your goals are as an eBay seller. And at the same time, understanding that what eBay, I mean, bottom line is in anybody, you know, whether you're Macy's, Nordstrom's, eBay, they must take care of customers. If they do not take care of customers, we don't have a business. eBay doesn't have a business. We don't have a business. So returns are an absolute necessity to take care of customers, to attract them so that they keep coming back. Now, that being said, I mean, I'm selling on eBay now for over 10 years. Returns are a bare minimum. There are some categories where you're going to see higher returns. Um, to be honest, something like shoes comes to mind because oftentimes people will buy two or three pairs of shoes and then they return the ones that don't fit. So if you go into certain categories where it is going to be a higher return rate, that's something that you factor into your business, either on the prices that you're charging, the prices that you're charging for shipping. It's called your profit margin. You look at how much you're selling, how much is coming back, how much it's costing you, because you got to realize it's your time to pack and ship it out, and then it's going to be your time to process it coming back. You've got to take a long, hard look at that. So with the spring seller update, um, what's been going on now is there's a huge variety of return policies on eBay, um, and that's the way it's been. It is confusing to sell, excuse, confusing to buyers. So what eBay is doing is it's cleaning it up, there's going to be five options and five is good. It gives us five choices. So we as sellers, eBay isn't making me do anything. They're saying, Kathy, we love you selling here. You have five choices for return policies, five as of June 1st. You'll need to pick one of those five for your items. Now, this is the first place where people seem to get confused. And I'm going to give you a lot of great tips about increasing your business, scaling your business, and what is called profit margins. So comment free, F-R-E-E, -E, in the thread below, and I'll send those to you free. Um, so you, you look at what kind of business you want. Um, you look at the spring seller update. You look at the five choices you have. And this is the first area where people are getting stuck. They think it's an all or nothing, and it is not and all or nothing. You have five choices for your items, okay? And this is true in brick and mortar, and I also see it on other online retailers, which is certain categories will have one return policy, um, perhaps custom, custom engraving. I notice oftentimes in stores, if you have something custom engraved with initials or embroidered, those are not returnable. Okay, so I have noticed that in some stores here in New York City. So the first policy that you may choose for your items is no returns. The people that tend to go for no returns are, again, some of the custom sellers and people that are selling currency. There's people that are selling things that are made of gold, made of silver, um, where the metal price may be going up and down. Um, sometimes with a very fine collectible, um, they might choose to be a no return policy, but it is a bare minimum. Um, I know, especially as a newer seller, um, and this is years ago, you know, maybe nine years ago, 10 years ago, I can't even remember. Um, I had no returns when I first started because I didn't want any returns. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know any seller that wants returns, right? I don't want returns. It's like, please, no, no. Um, but you need to take returns. And the reason for taking returns is it goes to building buyer confidence. And this is when you put on your hat. I don't even have a hat, so I'm going to put my iPad on. You put on your buyer hat and you think like a buyer. Um, if you don't shop eBay, I encourage you to do so. It's a good thing to do. Um, and if you don't shop eBay, but you shop other places, think about what it's like to shop there. I want to know that I'm going to be taken care of. 
when I shop on eBay, and actually I did shop on eBay today. Um, I bought a dress and I bought something else. Oh, a DVD. Is the DVD, we'll take the DVD as an example. If I get the DVD and for whatever reason it's really scratched or it's cracked or there's something wrong with it so it doesn't play, I want to be able to get my money back really, really easily. Um, some sellers, if I was to message them and say, hey, the DVD's cracked, I can't play it, they'll want a picture. No problem with that. As a buyer, I just, you know, I just shoot a picture of it and you can send it through eBay messages to the seller. They see it and then they refund. Um, others will just refund. You know, it just depends on the seller. Um, so I'm not looking to not have a great DVD and I'm not looking to not get a gorgeous dress. Um, but if for some reason I get the dress and there's a stain on it and the seller just overlooked it, they didn't see it, I want to be able to get my money back easily. That's what return policies are about. So the first one you're going to have is no returns. So if you have an item for some reason that you feel you just cannot take a return on it, um, you can choose no returns. I caution you strongly against doing no returns. And this is why, again, if you're a currency seller, I totally get it. But let's say you're a clothing seller or a newer seller is there's always a way to force your hand. And if you're not aware of this, so let's say I, I um, buy the DVD. This is the DVD and it comes and you have stated no returns and I get the DVD and it's cracked or <laughs> scratched. I am going to file um, an item not as described against you. It's called um, SNAD, significantly not as described, or INAD, item not as described. And I'm going to open um, a case to get my money back. Now, even though you say no returns, you will see that the item arrived damaged or whatever, and, and you're going to end up giving me a return um, because eBay is going to side with me because the DVD is cracked, scratched, whatever. Um, same thing with the dress or whatever. So I encourage you is offer the returns. It makes it so much easier. Um, again, on the buyer side, if they receive the item and for any reason there's something wrong with it, you know, they open and not as described and then it goes through the return process. And if the item is not as described because it was torn, scratched, dented, whatever, um, the seller does pay the return shipping. And again, thankfully, that's very, very few. I may be, gosh, one every couple of months, you know. If you're getting more than that, if you're getting a lot of item not as described, that's an opportunity to take a look at your listing and see if there's something you need to do um, to upgrade the listing. You know, maybe I need to take better pictures. Maybe I need to include more measurements. Um, let's say a couple of times on, on coffee cups, um, they're coming with a chip in them, then I need to take a look at my shipping practices. So if you're getting item not as described, it's hard sometimes to not take it as an attack because you feel like, Ooh, but take it as an opportunity to go, is there something I can do better? Can I improve my listing? Can I improve my pictures? Can I improve my shipping? I actually had a situation, this is about three years ago, I had a coffee mug um, and I had a couple of them and there, I had two in a row. It, I'm trying to think why on earth it was so popular at that time. But anyway, it was a very popular coffee mug. Yay. Uh, <laughs> two in a row arrived damaged. And I was like, hmm. Now, I'm New York, and both of them were West Coast. So it's like it was traveling a far distance. But I had sold a couple of them with no issue, and all of a sudden, they were arriving damaged. So the only thing I could concur was, you know what? The USPS is getting rough with my mugs. And what I did was I um, I just wrapped them even better. I put more bubble wrap on them. I surrounded them with more cardboard, gave them more cushioning, more padding before they went, and then they were fine. So the two in a row that arrived damaged, rather than go, no, oh, you know, the post office, blah, 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 is go, wait a minute, what can I do? How can I turn this around? so that my customer is happy, they get the mug, then it's not damaged. I'm happy because I'm spending the money on the shipping and it all works out. So again, if you're getting a couple things arrived damage, we can talk about the post office till the cows come home, but go, what can I do to improve my packing so this doesn't happen? So no returns, which I don't recommend unless you're in a category where I totally get it like currency. Then you have 30 day buyer pays return shipping. They get the item, 
they buy the iPad with the red case and they get it and they go, you know, I just don't want red. I want blue. And I don't sell blue. So they send it back and I refund them their money. It comes back. It's still in the case. Everything's fine. I can resell it and I resell it. Okay. Then you have 60 day uh, buyer pays return shipping. I personally have not done that. Um, I knew I do know sellers that do it. They love it. They feel it gives them an edge um, because maybe everybody else is doing 30 day uh, returns and they're doing 60. So they feel it's a way to stand out and it is a way to stand out. So if you're in a very competitive category and you notice that everybody is 30 day returns, why not try 60? It's worth testing and seeing how it works. If you get a bump in sales because you're offering 60 day returns, it is absolutely worth doing. So that's the first three choices that were announced in the spring seller update. Then the fourth choice is 30 day seller pays return shipping, which is free returns. <laughs> everybody's like, ah. this is the one that everybody's been screaming about because what people are hearing is eBay is making me take returns. And that is not the case. eBay is giving you five choices and you decide which one is best for you. So you go, okay, why on earth would I want to be doing free returns? Um, so first is look, and I actually looked. So go into your seller hub. And if you do this, I'm actually going to do this while I talk to you guys. So hang on a second. If you do it and you click, uh underneath orders so i come back here so if you go into your seller hub and you click the tab that says orders underneath orders underneath orders is all orders awaiting payment awaiting shipping paid and shipped cancellation returns then cases and shipping labels and what you want is returns then you're going to click returns orders returns you can click returns closed returns replacement it's the last tab in the series there's a bunch of different things that you can pick look at how many returns you got you'll know exactly how many returns you got for the past 90 days and you'll see what the criteria was for the return was it an item not as described and you'll know whether you felt it was justified or not or was it just what they call buyer's remorse? And a buyer's remorse return is, well, I just didn't like it. I changed my mind. You know, that kind of thing. Also doesn't fit is also um, a, a buyer's remorse. It's a buyer's remorse, but it's not a buyer's remorse. It's, it's, they changed their mind because they didn't like the way it fit. But it's not that you did anything wrong because you included the measurements, you include the pictures. They just don't like the way it fit. Um, but it can be that way with jewelry, you know, they look at it and it's like, you know what, it's just too big for my hand. So this is what I did is look at all of your sales and you can do that in your seller hub, which is paid and shipped everything for 90 days and write the number down. Is it a hundred, 200, 300, 400, 500,000, whatever it is, write the number down, paid and shipped. Then look at your returns. Was it five, 10? Zero, if it's zero, it's like, yay. Now, if it's zero, you've really got no reason not to do free returns. Now, if you're in a category where you really think offering free returns is just gonna be like a flag saying, hey, you know, come, <laughs> come and shop with me and return your stuff, you know, I understand. And then you may wanna test it. So if you've gotten no returns, but you're a little nervous, test it. If you're selling, let's say, in three different categories, you know, you could split the category right down the middle or do 10 percent, 20 percent, whatever you want. And do right now before the policy the policy doesn't go into effect as far as top rated seller discount till June 1st. And I'll explain that. Split it. Try 20, 30, 40, 50. Just split your categories and do whatever your current return policy is. 30 day buyer pays return shipping and do free returns. See what happens. I know a lot of sellers that are doing free returns that they have seen no increase, some reported decrease, but you're going to find out for yourself. And that's what I really encourage you is because, again, back to the beginning, what is your eBay business? What do you want? I want a prosperous, wonderful business where I'm selling fantastic products 
to fantastic customers and I want my customers to be happy. I want them when they get the item, they go, gosh, this is great. I love it. I love shopping with Kathy. I can't wait to come back and shop with Kathy some more. And if they get the item for any reason, they go, mm, this just isn't what I thought it was going to be here. You know, Kathy, I changed my mind. <laughs> I was like, I really thought I was going to want this or like this. And mm, I really don't want it. They return it. It's not a problem. I have some categories, and this is what I wanted to bring up about free returns, which I don't hear everybody talking about, is it's a choice, and you don't need to do it on everything. I was talking about this with Brian Burke when he was here yesterday here in New York City visiting, is you don't need to put it on everything. So, for instance, with my iPads, if I don't want to be paying returns on my iPads, then I do 30-day buyer pays return shipping. Right. And but on my water bottles, here's Kathy's water bottle. Sure. I never get returns on my water bottles. I'll do free returns on the water bottles and see what happens. I find by and large in categories like collectibles, at least for me, the collectibles that I sell, I don't maybe I've gotten one return. I mean, I really can't remember of a single return I've gotten on collectibles. So I'll take free returns on collectibles. I might even try 60 day free returns and see what happens. Again, because I wanna stand out and search, it helps me to stand out. So again, free returns, 30 day buyer pays return shipping, 60 day buyer pays return shipping, 30 day free returns, and then 60 day free returns. And the reason to look at doing the 30 day and 60 day free returns is you will stand out in whatever categories you're selling in. And particularly for you all that are in really competitive categories, um, and all of eBay is competitive at this point. You know, when people talk about, oh, you know, I sold blah, blah, you know, four or five years ago, and all I had to do was list it, and there were bidding wars. It, yes, <laughs> I do remember those days, too, and they are long gone. I mean, right now, we're in a situation of every category has a lot of great sellers, if not hundreds, if not thousands of great sellers, and um, we're competing. And one of the ways to stand out is our return policy. So if everybody is 30 days and you can be 60 days, it's a way to stand out. If every day is 30 day buyer pays return shipping and you wanna try free returns, I encourage you to try it and test it and see what works for you. Rather than listen to people that are screaming and crying and yelling, um, and they might have had a really bad situation. I'm not trying to belittle anybody's pain when they're dealing with a really, you know, uncomfortable return. But thankfully, they are very few and far between. And if for any reason you get a series of returns, and every now and then it does happen, you'll get two or three in a row. You're like, oh, what's going on? Look at it. And see if there's something that you can adjust. You know, is it a measurement? Is it pictures? Is it the way you're wrapping? Um, you know, is there something I can do to help so that when that buyer gets the item, they're really delighted and they're really happy? Sort and look at how many returns you get overall. And let's say it is only nine or 10 over 90 days or five over 90 days. Look at what the cost is to do a free return. So let's say that's gonna cost you $50 if you were to pay for those free returns. Then look at how many items you sold, 400, 500. You know, you can increase your price by 20 cents, 25 cents, 30 cents on all your items and absorb the cost that way. Because I titled this, there is no free returns. There isn't, somebody's paying for the free return. Let's get real. And it's the seller, you know, eBay's encouraging the seller to absorb the cost um, with the spring seller update. So then we as sellers have to figure out, and that's why I started with what kind of business do I want to have, is I need to make money. I'm in this to make money. This is a business. I want to take care of customers. Um, I love the flexibility and I need to make money. So how can I structure my business to offer attractive return policies and still make um, the money that I need to make to keep my business going? Um, because if I'm not making money, um, then I can't be running my business and I can't take care of my customers. Bottom line, um, and this is certainly true in brick and mortar and it's true everywhere, is when companies take returns, ultimately it is the consumer that pays for it in higher prices because that's the way companies can afford to take returns. It's factored into the price of the item. 
So I encourage you as an eBay seller, rather than going, oh, you know, like, oh, what's happening? You know, and, you know, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose all my money. I can't make any money. Is no, you can. Look at how much you're selling, what your returns are. Now, if you're somebody who gets no returns, absolutely, I would say go for the 30-day free returns. And you might even try the 60-day free returns. It's like, why not just really stand out and attract customers? Um, if you're in categories where it's more of a challenge, offer different return policies for different items. You know, other stores do it. You can do it, too. Um, if you want to try it, even on a category where you know you're probably going to get some returns, but you still want to do free returns because you want to stand out, is figure out what it's costing you. Is it costing you 50, 60, 80? And then adjust your prices. If I adjust everything by 30 cents, and I mean everything by 30 cents, and you can do that in bulk edit, just pull everything up, increase everything by 30 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, whatever it is, you can do it by percentage, you can do it by um, a financial amount, and do it that way. But do what's best for you. Now, all of that being said, in case you haven't thought about this, if you're a top rated seller and you're a top rated seller, the criteria is on eBay. And if you don't know what it is, just Google top rated seller. You have to be active on eBay for 90 days. And that's not necessarily as a seller. Um, so new sellers might be a top rated seller sooner than they think. Um, 100 transactions on eBay US. It's the criteria for the United States. And every eBay has uh, criteria. So eBay Canada has criteria. eBay UK has criteria. eBay Australia. But for U.S., 100 transactions, um, uh, I remember correctly, it's $1,000 U.S. And then there's customer service criteria, you know, uploading your tracking, that kind of thing. Once you are a top-rated seller, and there's been a lot of confusion on this. So the confusion's men, I have to do free returns on everything. You don't. You have choice. You have five choices. And it's up to you to test them and see what works for you. Second thing I've been hearing that people aren't hearing, top rated sellers, and you know if you are one, and if you're not sure, click your feedback number. It'll be right there on the landing page. It'll say top rated seller. If you want to be top rated plus, and there's a couple of benefits of top rated plus, you get a medallion on your listing. It looks like um, you want a blue ribbon, but it's like a gold medallion, and it says top rated plus. If you want the medallion on your listing. If you want the 10% final value fee discount that comes with top rated plus, top rated seller is your great seller. You've met this criteria. You get it on the landing page where the feedback is. To get the medallion on the listing, to get the 10% final value fee for the item, you will need to offer 30 day free returns or 60 day free returns after June 1st with same or one business day handling. So you do have choice. You'll choose to do perhaps free returns on some, not on others. You might do free returns on everything. But what I'm saying is when you're doing your math for my top rated sellers, be sure to include the 10% final value fee. The easiest way to figure that one out is just look at one of your old invoices and see roughly how much you save every month being a top rated seller. That might pay for the returns. So it's like, okay, you don't get that money in the bank for yourself, but let's say you're saving 50, 100, 150, $200, you know, in an invoice with your top rated plus discount. And let's say you're getting $30, $40. If you're paying for free returns, it would cost you 30, 40. You can still come out ahead. So do the math both ways is, um, you know, figure out you're going to get that 10% final value fee. If you do free returns after June 1st, figure out the discount. This is why, oh, the calculator, get the calculator out um, because it can pay for itself. Now, I know this is getting a little complicated, but you really need to, to, to hear it because it's going to help you with your business. So five return policies, you'll decide what's best for you. If you're a top-rated seller, don't forget to factor in the 10% final value fee. There are seller protections in place after June 1st for people that do the free returns. And this can really sort of seal the deal for a lot of people. Um, so if you're in um, a category where you're selling a lot of new with tags, 
and people have the potential to return something to you without the tag. It can also be for people to sell used items. So let's say you sell used clothing and the item comes back and it's been visibly used. There's deodorant stains on it. It smells like perfume, something like that. You will be able to, if you offer free returns, you get automatic protection. It's on the spring seller update. Hang on a second. I'll tell you exactly where it is. Um, it's under the protection. So hang on a second and I'll read it to you. Because people are missing out on that too. But it's only, it's under the seller protection tab. Seller protections. After June 1st, if you offer free returns, you're going to have greater control to manage your business. You can decide to issue a partial refund to buyers. If a buyer uses or damages an item and returns it, you can decide to issue a partial refund and eBay will take it from there. You're protected. The cell phone comes back. It's not in the box. The cell phone comes back and they don't have the charger with it. The iPad comes back. They crack the screen. Because you are doing free returns, eBay protects you. So let's say the dress does come back and it's still, I can totally sell it, but the tag is off. So I cannot sell it as new with tags. I'm going to sell it as gently used or I'm going to sell it as new without tags. For me, I would sell it as gently used because I'm going to assume they tried it on and I just want to cover myself. So perhaps I want to only give them back 60 or 70 or 80% of their money. I can do that. eBay will protect me. If for any reason the buyer wants to leave me negative feedback, I am protected very much like the global shipping program if they complain about the customs fees. Okay. So I encourage you to read that. So again, Google Spring Seller Update. And what you want to read is seller protection. And it is only that part of seller protection. I mean, we're always protected, but that part of seller protection of that you can issue a partial refund. And if you get pushback from the buyer on the partial refund, like I want all my money back, I'm going to leave you bad feedback, or they leave you bad feedback, you just hand it over to eBay and they will protect you. Now, for some people, that's a huge weight off their shoulders for my new tag sellers that want to offer free returns, but are concerned about things coming back without tags on. My used clothing sellers, they're like, but Kathy, it came back and, you know, there's deodorant, it smells, whatever. If with the free returns, you'll be able to do a partial refund, you know, and then launder the item and then perhaps be able to resell it. Okay. So that's why I want you to start with is what kind of business do you want? Thankfully, 99.999% of buyers are terrific, right? We are part of retail. eBay is not alone. You have to think of all retail and look at all retail. All retail offers return policies. And again, there's always some very tight um, specified things. I think of the jewelry store with engraving where they won't take it back once it's been customized. Um, but otherwise to offer a return policy. And the better return policy you can offer, because we are a competitive marketplace, it helps you to stand out and attract shoppers. And in fact, I was reviewing this and comment free, F-R-E-E, -E, um, to get more um, great sales tips and also how to scale your business tips from me. Um, and I was looking at this, I was going over this because actually Brian and I were talking about this, is, in case you have forgotten, best match is eFault's default search. When people just come on, especially on their phones, and we know how many mobile shoppers there are, best match is the default search on eBay. And guess what one of the criteria for best matches? Can you guess? Hmm, what's one of the criteria for best match? You want to guess, you guys? I'm looking at the comments. Thank you for commenting free. You're going to love the tips. Um, guess what one of the uh, criteria for best matches? Hmm, what it, could it be? Your return policy. So what that says to me, particularly on items, I was looking at something for a client and there's like, Literally in the category I was looking at, it was something like two or 3,000 listings. I was like, oh my goodness, right? Yes, Dominica, that's what I'm thinking of as free returns. Because if the return, not if, the return policy, Google criteria for eBay best match. And don't look at people's opinions. Look at what eBay says, okay? This is the way I do it. Look at what eBay says. 
and read it, it says part of the criteria for best match is return policy. So if you and I are neck and neck on something, and you're doing 30-day buyer pays return shipping, and I'm doing 30-day free returns, or 60-day free returns, and I know everybody's going, no, Kathy, maybe 30, but 60, no, no. But even if you do 30-day free return, guess who just got an edge? Now, there's a lot of criteria to best match. So I don't want you saying, oh, well, Kathy says free returns, I'm going to be tops at best match, because I'm not saying that. It's one of the criteria. But it's a criteria that if everybody else is doing buyer page return shipping and you're doing free returns and you also have a great listing, you know, da, 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 it helps you to get that bump in best match. And it's important. And we all know that. OK, so any quick questions? Comment free. I'll send you my great tips. So think about what kind of business you want. And to have that kind of mindset, and I know some days it's like you're just tired or it's just like there's a lot going on. I totally get it is, you know, I love my business. I love selling on eBay. I love the flexibility. I love the money that it brings my family. I love my customers. I get the nice, I read your feedback. Isn't it fun to read your feedback? You know, they go fast shipping, just as described, love the item, great price, read your feedback. Those are your buyers. Those are the people that eBay is bringing you. And then look at your return policy. Okay, what can I do to attract shoppers? What's going to work in this category? What's going to work in that category? Look at your numbers. See what is the best policy for you. And know that your return policy is part of the criteria of best match. And you certainly want to get the very best placement and best match that you can. Okay. 60 days, Diana is saying 60 days also means they put it off and they're likely to forget. Yes. And there's an X. I actually have a blog post on it. If you want, hop over to my blog. I love to be selling.com. And the blog post I did about the spring seller update. Um, I have a link and I believe it's the Washington Post um, spoke to that. They did um, some research with um consumer returns. And it is, they go, oh yeah, I got the iPad. No, I'm not totally thrilled with the red, you know, but oh, it's Diana. I love buying from Diana. Oh, 60 days. Okay, great. You know, and then they get busy and they forget to return it because they decide, you know what? I like it. It's fine. I, you know, it's fine. I'll keep it. It's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's that kind of thing. So yes, having a longer return policy rather than um, if you remember like seven day returns, they're like, oh God, it don't like oh, better return it really fast because you know, the deadline, um, it can, it can give them more. It gives them more comfort also, because this has come up too quickly before I sign off is free returns is for domestic only. So if you're a U.S. seller, it's to the United States. It is not free global returns. So you're not getting free returns from Canada uh, UK, Australia. And again, for each country. So if you're in the United Kingdom, you'd be looking at free returns, um, what the rules are for your area and the same thing for Australia. So free returns is domestic only. Okay. So that everybody's clear about that. Um, but comment uh, free and I'll send you some more great tips. Um, and that's it. So just what kind of business do I want? Think about my wonderful customers. Take a look at your feedback. Look at how many returns you've actually gotten. And if you are in a category with, with some high returns, and I know there are people that are, um, then you pick a return policy that's going to be best for you. Look at your profit margins. Look at where the money's going to come from. Do I increase the price? Can I increase the shipping? Can I change the shipping? Um, wh what can I do so I, I keep getting um, the profit that I need for my business? Sometimes the margins do get tighter. You know, sometimes if I'm used to making, you know, 40, 50 percent on this item or 40 or 30 percent, you know, it's going to drop down to 28, 27, 25 in order to remain competitive and in order to do a good return policy. But then I can focus on moving the things quickly so that I get my money back faster. So my margins are tighter. Margin means how much money you're making. Um, but I then focus on moving it faster and that can help you that way. OK, so great to talk to you guys. Um, just focus, focus, focus. What do I want my business to be like? Pick a great return policy that's going to attract the kind of customers that you want. Just take great, great care of them. Every now and then we get a stinker. You know, you just deal with it. But thankfully, the stinkers are few and far between. <laughs> I'm Kathy, and I love to be selling. Bye-bye.